Hello, oh, everybody, we're back, we're live. VMworld 2011, this is Dave Vellante for SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of the event. Uh, we're here at day two, and we are here with Vittorio Viarengo from uh, VMware. Sorry, did yeah, I get that perfect, right? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, 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 my ancestors are Italian, so I'm, uh, I'm an American. I only speak one language, so that's how you know I'm American. But uh, Vittorio is the VP of End User Computing, so welcome, Vittorio. Thanks yeah. for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, end User Computing. Uh, I, I'm, personally, I'm very happy, and my colleague and uh, John Furrier and I have talked about this a lot. For years, we've been calling it desktop virtualization, and that really sort of misses the whole point. And yet, I think everybody fell into that trap. You guys are calling it end user computing. Why is that? Because we, we look at the data, and in a world where um, you know tablets and smartphones already outship uh, the PCs, we are already in the post PC era. And so we are very focused on solving that problem. How do we enable both the desktop to bring, be brought forward, but also how do we get to the application and the data uh, in this post-PC world? Yeah, you know, that post-PC era, you know, it's not just rhetoric, is it? I mean, you see a, a big company like HP talking about exiting the PC business. I mean, it's, we're in it's astounding times. I mean, the PC's not dead, but we're evolving. So how do you, uh, evolve your uh, end user computing strategies to accommodate all these different uh, devices. It doesn't happen overnight. Talk about that a little bit. So we're not naive about this. Windows is going to be here for a long time. When we, we get that. And that's where uh, with Vue and ThinApp, we help organization bring that into the future and turn it into a managed service. But now we're with this new uh, project that we announced uh, today, like Project Octopus and Ablast, we're really shifting gears into this uh, new world. So you, you made some announcements today. Uh, you announced View 5, a bunch of new enhancements, uh, improving graphics, and just making the end user experience better, right? But you talked about Octopus and App Blast. What's Octopus? So Octopus, think about it as a, the Dropbox for the enterprise. You know, you have the same uh, seamless experience for end users, but give IT control. So when they need it, when they need compliance, uh, they need to do an audit trail, when they need to wipe a device, they have that capability. Okay, so, um, is that going to become part of the, the, the app store, if you will, that, uh, that you're going to offer, right? Yeah, we, we foresee this, uh, this world where you go to, the user goes to one place, they have their enterprise apps, their, their SaaS apps, mobile apps, and their data, Windows apps, and their data, and it, they follow them across all the devices. Now, what about App Blast? What's, uh, what's that? So App Blast, it, traditionally, if you want to access a Windows application on a non-Windows uh, device, you need to set up a big server farm, you know, publish that application, technology that works. It's been there forever, but it only targets like maybe 10, 15% of the users. So with Ablast, we really want to make it very, very simple to drop an agent on even a physical desktop, and then as long as you have an HTML5 browser, you can get to that application. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, Vittorio, last year at VMworld in San Francisco, Maritz basically said, look, we have to do better at end user computing, uh, desktop virtualization, VDI, whatever. It, it was calling it VDI at the time. Yeah. So we have to do better. Um, thus far, that whole space has been relegated to pretty narrow niches. Uh, maybe call centers, maybe certain uh, industries, certain use cases. Um, are the economics there finally, or um, is it really a case where we have to accommodate more devices and that's the business value that's going to push this thing over the edge? It's a combination of the two. The, the business value is absolutely there for those use cases. Right. If you're a bank, you need to secure your data. It doesn't even matter how much it costs. So on that front, we're always trying to bring down the acquisition cost and our solution is so nicely integrated that you actually get benefit on the management side. Uh, and then uh, this, all these devices coming into the organization has been a great catalyst for us because IT is, is going, hey, I know how to build with a desktop. If you can make it mobile for me, that's great. But we see that as a transition. Eventually, I think we need to get to the data and apps and deliver three of them. Apps, data, and the desktop, depending on the use case, to the different devices. What's different about virtualizing end user devices and applications versus virtualizing servers? Well, there are many differences. First thing, on the server side, you can get away with virtualizing stuff under the covers, the stuff that IT uses, file, print, and all that, for a while before you mess with mission critical applications. So now, in our journey on the server side, we are doing that. We're doing the mission critical application and so on and so forth. With end users, you're mission critical for day zero. 
You know, if, if your CEO cannot access that information on, on, on a desktop or on a device, yeah. or forget about the CEO, sales guys, anybody. And so it's mission critical for day one. The second thing is the, the heterogeneity. It's so much more heterogeneity, it makes the, the problem a little more complex. Yeah, okay. Um, are there are there workload differences as well? I mean, a lot of people think, okay, well, I'm going to virtualize my servers and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll use maybe this hypervisor or whatever, and I'll just apply that same company's technology to my my end user yeah. computing devices, but it's different, isn't it? It you is different. You got to think you know, about it differently, you got to size it differently. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the workloads are different if you talk about just desktop virtualization because there's uh, different type of I.O. patterns uh, and if you just take the approach of taking your desktops and virtualizing them, you're going to fail because you're going to have your uh, boot storms, you're going to have your um, antivirus storms and so on and so forth. But over the last two, three years between the storage vendors and us, we have figured that out. So now we have the best practices to do it right. It's not a rocket science anymore. And you think the economics are there now? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, all right, good. Let's talk about the competitive landscape a little bit. It's really a two-horse race. You, know, you guys and Citrix are out there, banging heads, going after this space. Uh, I think, again, based on what Marit said last year, you guys were rethinking this a little bit, trying to broaden the scope into, uh, into end-user devices, into mobile, to take advantage of mobile. What are your advantages relative to your major competitor? Well, I think, you know, in the world, but 50% of the servers run on uh, vSphere, companies are making a big strategic investment in us. Uh, and I think we have, so we have that credibility. And on the end user's com computing side, we have brought in a lot of DNA because it's a different ball game, we, need, we understand that. We need more of a, a desktop and end user DNA. Um, and we see us as a viable partner to take customers in the post PC world. Well, I think that our competition it has a kind, kind of a conflict of interest with the relationship with the Microsoft. So it's going to be interesting how that plays out. Well, I mean, the customers are clearly entrenched, yeah. right? I mean, that, that's an advantage and a, and a disadvantage in some cases. But I mean, essentially your premise is they're doing server virtualization with you guys, so there's an affinity to do end user computing affinity, uh, uh, virtualization with you guys, even though the workloads may be very, very different. And we don't, but we don't take that for granted. We understand don't take that, what, that the workloads are different and no, we don't take for granted that it's just going to go with us. Well, it's not <laughs> right. It hasn't historically. So, um, what do you have to do better? Um, I think we just have to be more assertive about um, the strength of our platform and our vision. Uh, in the past, I think you know we we are geeks. We we, we like to s sit in our labs and build great software, and uh, that is changing. Started from this conference. Um, you mentioned vision. Uh, last question for you is, is, lay out your vision. What do you see in the future? Put on your telescope, look out there. What do you see? Well, I, we see this world where um, the Windows is not the choice. It's just one of the choices. Uh, and then users get their work done um, with the devices that they like. And uh, where IT becomes this if we do this right, becomes a partner. Becomes that, like I said today on stage, I said, man, I love this IT because I never see them, I never meet them. They set it up and I and I just get my work done. Yeah, our, our, our man Alex Williams, who uh, heads up Services Angle, was showing me a demo last night. He videoed a demo of a device that was, it showed a, a, a work uh, a, a, a footprint and then a, a, yeah. a personal footprint, just switching back and forth seamlessly, yeah. brilliant. brilliant. When yeah. can I get one? <laughs> Soon, we are announced ah, it today, it's, uh, it's in beta, and uh, stay Fantastic. tuned. Uh, Vittorio, thanks very much for coming inside theCUBE, sharing your knowledge with us. Good luck with the, uh, with the, the announcements today, and, uh, and your- yeah, Thank you, it was a pleasure.